The finale of Jujutsu Kaisen is near, and tension has finally tightened up within the fanbase, especially with brand new power-ups for Yuji Itadori, the series' main character. He has been so powerful in the past few chapters that it presents him with a sequence of incredible improvements. He now poses as a significant threat, and he has one last ace up his sleeve that will be presented to readers this week with NJGK Chapter 265. This ace is Yuji's domain expansion, which he accessed for the very first time last week. The ins and outs of this domain expansion are still unknown. However, fans have some ideas based on Yuji's past, uses of his cursed techniques and thematic elements the author has woven into his character. It ensures that the next stage shall be very vital in defining Yuji's role and unleashing tremendous power against the King of Curses. The anticipation is already very high for what's next, for this is supposed to stamp Yuji's status in the story and let the rest see that he has become a force to reckon with. Anyway, before we continue any further, please press the like button and please subscribe to my channel and turn on all post notifications so that you don't miss any daily uploads. Now. Let's begin. Everything comes down to how Yuji will test his new power on Sukuna himself in the pivotal moment of this battle. Yuji Itadori's journey in Jujutsu Kaisen reached an important point when he finally released his domain expansion during a tout battle with Sukuna. This breakthrough was built on two key elements. First off, Yuji unveiled his innate technique after he successfully delivered a really devastating black flash on Sukuna. It was during the Shinjuku Showdown arc. At the time, Sukuna was facing several sorcerers, and Yuji's strong hit finally awoke his latent power to elicit the Bloodline Limitation event. The next big factor in Yuji's growth was his relationship with Ryomen Sukuna. Although Sukuna's inhabiting of Yuji's body showed much inconvenience, it had some big advantages. One of these advantages includes the eventual accessing of the shrine technique by Yuji. Since the early chapters of the series, it had become evident that eventually Sukuna's inhabiting of Yuji would mean Yuji gaining access to Sukuna's cursed techniques. This was hinted at first by Gojo and then confirmed later on, thus setting the stage for Yuji's growth. Through the series, audiences have seen the ups and downs of Yuji as he wrestled with the power and potency of Sukuna. Nevertheless, these had been what he needed to get stronger and more resilient. Then came the event finally marking his long-awaited awakening, Domain Expansion, which is crystallized from all of his efforts and growth up until that point. More than a simple potential power, this was Yuji finding his place as a sorcerer. It is during the Shinjuku Showdown arc that Yuji's newfound powers were finally put to the test. The application of the Black Flash and eventually the realization of his original technique have been important steps in his development. Through his fierce fight against Sukuna, regarding the domain expansion for Yuji, was really set up quite well through the series. The build-up to Yuji's domain expansion included his learning of the barrier techniques. Many sorcerers trained him in view of the Battle of Shinjuku, most importantly Utah and Kusakabi. He got manipulated into using Body Swap, which furthered his training under Kusakabi in barrier techniques, he learned simple domains that helped in his domain expansion. Throughout the time skip, it became really intense and multifaceted training with a focus on barrier techniques. This would bear fruit as he masters manifesting a domain and fusing it with his innate technique. This rewarding moment culminates in chapter 264 of Jujutsu Kaisen when during their fight, Yuji carved out a special hand sign to strike Sukuna with his domain expansion. Even then, how does his domain expansion works or what its powers and effects are remains unknown to fans. It is due to this vagueness that Chapter 266 of Jujutsu Kaisen holds so much importance. There's an expectation of more details concerning this new ability and what it holds for Yuji in his future battles. He has the potential to integrate two different techniques into his domain. Currently, he has access to two major abilities, Blood Manipulation, which he gained by eating Death Paintings numbers 4 through 9, and the Shrine Curse Technique from Sukuna. Either of these techniques can be used by Yuji in his domain to set up a very powerful, effective zone of control. Still, using the Shrine Curse Technique seems more feasible. He isn't fully skilled in Blood Manipulation. He can use it to use Inverse Curse Techniques, 
But with the higher techniques like piercing blood, the ability is actually pretty limited and usually requires help. Considering that Yuji's potential with blood manipulation itself is somewhat limited, the Shrine Curse technique would be a bit more practical in terms of his domain. This can let him create a domain that exploits his strong points to the maximum and bring out the full potential. In the case of Yuji, one should take note of how his technique contrasts with that of Sukuna. Although both are founded on the same principles, their use is wholly unconnected. Sukuna's method is something relatively loose. He applies his technique of cursed and broad strokes and without so much thought for accuracy applying cleave and dismantle to anything within reach. There is a sort of principled importance, so he applies an indiscriminate approach representative of his nature and the era of his origin. On the contrary, Yuji is supposed to devoid much of his distraction by using the shrine technique. To begin with, there's doubt about Yuji's domain, whether it will be an open area or a small space. For that single reason, encasement of domain is possible such that Sukuna gets trapped in. Moreover, there would not be a tactic of indiscriminate destruction as per Yuji's approach. As a matter of fact, Yuji applies his powers very thoughtfully. He would likely target only the parts of Sukuna he needs to, rather than causing random chaos. It's possible that Yuji's domain reflects a different nature than Sukuna's. If Sukuna's malevolent shrine represents his mindless violence, then Yuji's domain would be more in the lines of a benevolent shrine. In that case, his main purpose would be to take care of those beyond redemption and lead them to their final place. In such a case, Yuji would actually go on a direct attack against Sukuna's soul to take him out without unnecessarily causing harm to others. This means that even though Sukuna might slash out everything in front of him, Yuji would be precise in only trying to target his core inside his territory. This method shows the thoughtful and planned use of Yuji's techniques against Sukuna's wilder, more chaotic approach. Sukuna cannot defend himself from an attack that Yuji prepares against him. Domains mostly work in a way that once the attack is set to hit, it becomes almost impossible to avoid. We currently don't know what exact kind of attack this is going to be, but it's clear that Yuji has something in store. From all that we have seen in the fight between Yuji and Sukuna so far, it looks like the said attack is directed directly at Sukuna's soul. Yuji will either use an existing technique or invent a new technique that's honed down to strike Sukuna directly at his core. The attack would be so powerful that the response from Sukuna would be massive, even potentially to vomit all his fingers dramatically. It ought to have been a permanent break and sent Sukuna's soul into the great beyond. In some senses, it is going to be a central concept within Yuji's domain and the approach to beating Sukuna. But then, this isn't the moment for fans to cheer and believe that simply winning in this confrontation will be the end of everything with Sukuna. There is one huge card that Sukuna has left in his sleeve. The merger, provided as a strategy by Kenjaku, this might give a chance for Sukuna to make an unexpected comeback while this final twist further intoxicates the storyline with thrill. The sorcerers have to confront it even if Yuji were to succeed in defeating Sukuna. Fans need to watch for how this final card unfolds in the battle's progress. Anyway, please tell me your thoughts in the comments below and please subscribe to my channel and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any daily uploads.